Hey, gangsters. Uh, so Matt here with some improv thoughts and insights. And um, I'm having a really tough time getting my thoughts out on this video. So this is going to be ramble on. And uh, just deal with it. Or don't turn the video off now. Uh, we got class tomorrow. Uh, looking forward to that. Hope to see you there on this Memorial Day weekend. So the thought processes are... Um, they're around stage fright, performance anxiety, fear of public speaking, and the fight or flight. Now we know that improv training in and of itself is very anxiety and fight or flight, you know, inducing and provoking. So when we're improvising, we're going into the unknown, we don't know what we're doing, and we're about to make a big fool out of ourselves. And um, we don't want to do that. We want to avoid being embarrassed and looking like an idiot at all costs. Now, here's one of the things where improv can really help break that whole fight or flight thing. Because if you think about it, fight or flight is a physical thing. We're literally, um, it, it comes from a time where we literally were running or fighting for our lives. But in, in modern day, where we're actually performing or giving a talk at work or whatever, that fight or flight isn't going to help us. Because we're not in a situation where we're going to be fighting for anything. This is going to be more of an intellectual thing. So uh, improv training uh, provokes these fears in us, but it also helps us overcome them. Because as we do improv training, there is a desensitization. Trust me. As you go through it, you will learn to desensitize and you won't get so riled up. Um, now, I will say this. It took me um, two to three years it was literally between year three and four where I really started to relax and come into my own as it relates to fight or flight, performance anxiety, and stage fright. Um, I would have I was three years in three years into my improv training, and I was still com had complete fight or flight. Was freaking out. Um, thought I should be better than I was for some reason. I'm like, well, I've been doing it for three years. I should really know what I'm doing. And it's like, no, that's not the case. So if you're in that world and you feel like you've been improvising a long time, yet you're still uncomfortable and you don't know what you're doing, that was definitely the case with me. And I've heard other very experienced improvisers say, you know, even at the year four and five level, they're like, I have, I don't get it. I just don't get it. So um, it takes quite a while for to get comfortable in the art of improv in terms of walking in and and creating a scene with someone else and having it be having it be fun to play and having it be comfortable to play and having it be engaging and making sense and good for the audience right because we know when we walk out and we do crappy scene and we know the audience thinks it's dumb and it's like what are we even doing here so that takes quite a while but the improv uh, training and repetition definitely will desensitize you in the fight or flight and in that performance anxiety world. And it does translate. Now I wanna, this is where the part of where I'm gonna babble on a little bit. Um, so I'm just gonna throw this out there and I'm freaking this video is going out. So this is the one. I um, auditioned for Singing in the Rain at, uh, it's at the Redlands Bowl. And so it's a stage theater, uh, stage production of the, of the musical. So uh, a couple months ago, there was a, uh, there was a singing audition. Now I can sing decently, so for the for that I, I had some fight or flight and I was nervous. But I'm like, look, I know I can sing, so it is what it is. Like my singing voice is my singing voice, so I'm just going to go and sing. So I did that. Now the other aspect was a dancing um, thing. So um, I had taken some be beginning tap, but largely the dance audition was tap related. So I, I go into this dance audition. And this choreographer comes out, and she's an advanced tap dancer. And she, man, it was like Broadway, the way this thing was run. I mean, these guys were not messing around. So she gets out there, and she's teaching the, the everyone. There's about 25 of us in this tap class, and she's going to teach us a dance that we're then going to perform for them for the audition. And she's going so fast, I had no chance I, I, she was going at such a, and I had taken a few classes before I had my tap shoes on and she is uh, going so fast. I, I was completely overwhelmed. I literally was, I was the only one in class, like just standing there. Everyone else is trying and I'm like going, dude, I can't even, I can't even fake it. And I kind of freaked out. I had anxiety. I'm like, well, there's no way I'm going to go out there and perform this. I'm not going to audition. I, I like, I'm not going to do it. 
Now the director and the producer, they were all encouraging. They're like, look, just do your best. And then something clicked into me in the middle of that process. I went, dude, just improvise it. Fake it till you make it. Get out there. Try to go along with them. Um, and so I did that. I went and I just faked it. I, was, I wasn't getting any of the clicks. I missed 90% of it. Um, but here is the other thought I want to get across. Um, those people that were really good. Now, some of the people that were auditioning, they were really quick to pick up her choreography. Which So she would do something really fast and then they would do it really fast. I'm like going, wow, I'm really out of my league here. I don't know what I'm doing and these people do. And I, I didn't have the presence of mind to go, oh, I'm a beginner and these guys are all experienced. Now, if I would have taken those great tap dancers and brought them into an improv environment, they would have been completely lost going, dude, I have no idea and I'm freaking out and they're in fight or flight and blah, blah, blah. So the... The kind of the message there was, you know, I'm not going to have a huge inner critic and beat myself up. I'm a beginning tap. These people are experienced. If I want to pursue that and I want to get good at it, I will. There's no reason for me to go into humiliation, shame, and all that. And that's kind of where the thought on this video was about. Um, when, when we start out an improv, and we have this huge fear of embarrassment, shame, and humiliation. The falseness about it is that you don't know, we don't know how to improvise at that point. Like, and you have to start learning, but we have all this fear of humiliation associated with it. And it's kind of like, it's almost like this virus in our psychology and in our mind that when we're going to go do something in front of a public audience, if we're not great at it, then there's going to be this huge fear of failing and humiliation and all that. And all this is to say that improv training or the like will help us overcome that false construct. And so um, I, I, I'm in the ensemble of this play, and we were doing, um, we were doing a, a tap thing last night in rehearsal. And the gal says, hey, you know, the ensemble, everybody out who wants to stay for tap, we're, we're going to do a tap number now. She's like, all of you might not make it, but you're all welcome to try. So when it was the same thing as the audition, I went out there, everyone's tapping, the lady's going Mach 9, I have no idea what's going on. Some of the other students are badass tappers, and they got it. And I went, oh, I don't, there's no nothing for me to be embarrassed about. In fact, I can be really happy that I'm even trying. So why don't I be that energy of, I'm just going to give effort and try my best and learn as best I can. And I'm not going to judge myself for looking like an idiot because if I'd been tapping for 10 years, I'd be where they are. And if you'd been improvising for 10 years, you would be. So the thought here is that the fear of humiliation and embarrassment, which really is creating the fight or flight, it's an illusion. And if we, whatever, wherever we are in life, if we can just be present, try our hardest, that really is good enough. Here's another, one other thing I want to say. Um, I had some fight or flight responses coming up last night. I knew something was going to, it's almost like I had this premonition. I walked into rehearsal going, oh. No, I'm a little nervous tonight for some reason, and it certainly ended up we're in this tap thing. I'm way over my head, and I felt kind of like a fish out of water. Um, and I'm just not going to be in this tap part. I'm in some of the other parts, but I'm just not going to be in this area where there are people that are better. Uh, what the heck was my point to that? Oh, so before the tap thing have even started, and I've sent a video out on this before about body language and body position. I was having the fight or flight, I'm sweating out my armpits and my, my, I could feel my heart rate was up and I was conscious of it. I'm like, oh, interesting, fight or flight. Okay, got it, you're nervous. And I, I found myself, we were standing, I was swaying a little bit and if you sway, if you're kind of moving or shaking, that's nervous energy as well. That's another fight or flight symptom. And um, the one thing I did is I took kind of the Wonder Woman body position. And I've sent a video out on this before. Lean forward, get on the balls of your feet, 
get your hands on your side, um, chest out, shoulders back. And I said to myself, you know what? I'm here. I'm going to do the best that I can. I'm going to be as present and focused and engaged as I can. I'm going to try my hardest. And that in itself is inspiring. It's inspiring for other, even for the producer and the director standing there. We all want to just see people try really hard. That's all. It's not how good you are. It's how hard are you trying. And um, I, I channeled all that energy, and I had a great night. It, like, I didn't have any shame or tripping out. I'm, I'm going to try. I'm going to stay focused. I'm not going to walk out. I'm not going to sit down. I'm going to do the best I can. Um, so there. Now, this is a really long, weird video. Um, improv training will help desensitize that whole fight-or-flight illusion. And then even then, when we go out into different environments, there's still a little tweaking that's got to go on in our heads about... Okay, I'm in a new environment now and the fight or flight is back up and then we can start to put it into perspective and just be people that are present in the moment and trying really hard, uh, which is good enough. Oh my God. So tomorrow we're going to do some long form, some short form. Um, we're going to work on things that will help you in improv scenes. Things that if you're uncomfortable and you don't know what to do in an improv scenes, I'm really going to underscore these are the things that you want to be doing. Um, so hope to see you tomorrow. Later.